This meeting is now being recorded. Well, thank you everyone for attending my capstone project final defense meeting. My research study today involves high fidelity simulation and self-efficacy. So the introduction. Simulation is widespread use across many industries, including the airline industry, military, and healthcare. Simulation is an imitation or replication of lifelike experiences and can be executed through multitudes of form, including flight, battlefield, and high fidelity patient simulators, to name a few. The concept of simulation has been in existence for a long time. And as technology evolves, so has the fidelity or lifelike attributes of the learning experiences. The fidelity of the simulation experiences are an essential component to overall learning because the higher the fidelity of the simulator, the more lifelike the experience becomes for the learner. Simulation in general provides a structured experiential learning experience whereby the learner can gain knowledge, skills, and confidence in a safe environment without adverse effects that can potentially cause injury and harm. High fidelity simulation provides the trainer with the ability to control the simulated practice environment through deliberate presentation and introduction of adverse real life like experiences within a safe, controlled learning environment. Simulation is learning by doing, and one of the main goals of the simulated life like learning experience is to develop problem solving and critical thinking skills of the learner so they may function at a higher integrative level in a real life practice environment. Simulation has been talked about as being the teaching and learning technology that can bridge the gap between theory and practice. Self-efficacy is the other variable in my research study, and in essence, it's a belief in one's abilities. So Van Vera in 1977 theorized that self-efficacy influences how people think, feel, interact, behave, and self-motivate. Van Vera's theory of self-efficacy states a person's level of motivation, effective states, and actions are based more on what they believe than actually what is objectively true. So the concept of self-efficacy is important because learners with high self-efficacy try very hard to attain their goals, use critical thinking and clinical reasoning skills, and possess determination that provide intrinsic motivation that keep them on task towards achieving their learning goals. Interestingly, self-efficacy beliefs are often more reliable predictors of a person's success than are self-confidence, self-esteem, past accomplishments, skills, and knowledge. So as a result of Bandura's research, conclusions have been made that people with high self-efficacy are more likely to succeed. So despite the widespread adoption and integration of high fidelity simulation learning into nursing's curricula, there remains inadequate research in nursing related to the documented benefits of the learning technology. The current research in nursing has been directed towards simulation at the associate degree in nursing, bachelor's degree, and higher with minimal to no research conducted on simulation and self-efficacy in relation to the practical nursing student. The practical nurse, just as the registered nurse, has an important role to play in caring for patients in a variety of healthcare settings, and research on this level of nursing is relevant and needed. So the problem statement. Um, whether or not high fidelity simulation experiences were effective in promoting self-efficacy of practical nursing students preparing to work in the clinical setting. So moving on to the background. So the healthcare environment today, as we know, is complex. As a result of new advances in technology, patients are living longer with multiple chronic diseases. There's widening scopes of practice for nurses and shortages of adequate nurses and other healthcare workers. So all of these different healthcare system complexities, coupled with heightened expectations of knowledge and skill levels from employers, make the role of a nurse, a graduate nurse, pardon me, very daunting. So the healthcare environment is demanding that nurses and other healthcare professionals transition seamlessly into the practice environment and hit the ground running. Nursing graduates must be able to function in these complex environments and provide a safe and confident care with minimal employer training, orientation, mentorship, and supervision. Unfortunately, since the year 2000 and beyond, healthcare facilities across the United States have reported significantly reducing their nursing graduate orientation programs from 30 days compared to an average of 90 days that was typically organized before the year 2000. So new nursing graduates are very apprehensive and unable to keep pace with these performance expectations. Studies have reported findings that nursing students perceive they're not prepared to take on the role of new graduate. Nurses, because they lack the confidence, have insufficient experience, and inadequate nursing skills for practice, which precipitates feelings of anxiety, insecurity, and inadequacy. So the employer demands as well of new nursing graduates, precipitating a state of crisis for the new nurse, and it's causing the nurses to leave their positions, creating nurse retention and attrition problems for the healthcare system. 
It's been reported that an estimated 30 to 50 percent of new nursing graduates are leaving their first job within one year of employment. So these nursing retention and attrition problems within the healthcare system directly impacts the quality of patient care. Studies have reported that increased nurse attrition undermines the quality of patient care and is directly linked with the increased likelihood of medical errors. Nursing attrition undermines a stable nursing workforce and it results in a decline of the quality of health care and patient health outcomes. The United States Bureau of Labor Statistics has projected a 19% employment growth for RNs and a 25% employment growth for LPNs within the next eight years. So from these employment projections, it's quite evident that registered nurses and LPNs will be in demand and there's no need or no room, pardon me, for them to leave the profession as a result of not being prepared to embark on their new clinical roles. So the purpose of the study. So this quantitative correlational study examined whether or not practical nursing students engaging in high fidelity simulation learning experiences report enhanced self-efficacy in relation to preparing to work in the clinical setting. The significance of the study the nursing educators, as we know, have an important role to play in sustaining the healthcare system of the future. Nursing educators must educate the next generation of nurses who are able to function in this multifaceted, demanding healthcare environment. Oftentimes, practical nursing students express lack of confidence with transitioning into the clinical practice setting and providing care to patients and their families. So unfortunately, this lack of confidence translates into high attrition rates of new nurses, which makes this research of great significance due to the widespread impact it can have on nursing and patient care. Nursing education curriculum must provide knowledge, skills, and experiences that give new nursing graduates the ability to transition seamlessly into the graduate nurse role that will inevitably encourage and promote the sustainability of the healthcare system. So my research question for the study was um, determining if there was a correlation between high fidelity simulation experiences and practical nursing students' self-efficacy in relation to clinical practice. The hypothesis for the study is that high fidelity simulation experiences will increase a practical nursing student's self-efficacy in relation to preparing to work in the clinical setting. The theoretical framework that was used for the study uh, was developed from Bandura's theory of self-efficacy. So the historical concept of self-efficacy dates back to Bandura's social learning theory in 1977 that was since renamed to social cognitive theory in 1986. So Bandura theorized that self-efficacy influences how people think, feel, interact, behave, and self-motivate. And expectations of self-efficacy are based on various antecedents, including performance accomplishments, vicarious experiences, verbal persuasion, and physiological and emotional states. So in relation to this research study, the independent variable for the study was high fidelity simulation, um, and it was the intervention. The dependent variable was self-efficacy. So the students engaged in the simulation experiences, it promoted the development of various antecedents that Bandura described as expectations or precursors of the development of self-efficacy. So quickly, just looking at things like performance accomplishments, speak to practical nursing students, mastery of nursing skills and care, so learning from mistakes and overall past experiences. Vicarious experiences um, include modeling of nursing care and skills through peer to peer support and evaluation. Verbal persuasion you know, really reflects positive reinforcement and constructive feedback. And lastly, physiological and emotional states um, spoke to the practical nursing student's self-evaluation and debriefing of the actual simulation learning experience. So these antecedents gained through the intervention of the high fidelity simulation was hypothesized to increase the nursing student's self-efficacy, making them feel more prepared or better prepared for clinical practice. So the scope of the project included practical nursing programs within the Education Affiliates Incorporated network of schools that use high fidelity simulation. The total practical nursing student population was 402 students, and all practical nursing students enrolled in term or quarter two or higher of the program who employed simulation within the curriculum were invited to participate in the study. So I excluded um, all the students enrolled or registered in term or quarter one of the program, and the rationale was because these students did not have clinical experiences or high fidelity simulation experiences, so thus they weren't relevant um, to my study. So for the use of the correlational methods, I examined if a relationship existed between the identified variables. Some of the limitations um, that, I, that I looked at were variables that may have impacted assessment, and some of those other variables 
could have been theory, classroom preparation, nursing skill lab experiences, um, population, available sample size, number of respondents, data collection, participant recall bias, time constraints, and technical difficulties. Another important thing is the results of the study were not generalizable based on the use of a convenient sample. So in addition, I understood that the correlation uh, between the variables did not necessarily reflect a cause and effect relationship. All right, so on to the lit search. Um, as you can see, I conducted an extensive lit search um, using various databases. Moving on to lit search review highlights. So some of the highlights of my lit search included simulation as widespread use in medicine is considered a reliable educational and training tool. Experiences with simulation provide knowledge, confidence, which are cited as important components of optimal patient outcomes. High fidelity simulation increases student confidence and self-efficacy and helps reduce, reduce the overall stress related to clinical practice. Um, the Institute of Medicine has endorsed simulation as an educational strategy that can be used to expand the workforce, assess competency, and promote team building among staff. Um, simulation can be used to advance patient care and technical skills with collaboration, enhancing the collaboration, developing critical thinking and clinical reasoning skills among healthcare professionals. Um, other highlights, students decided as a useful technology for teaching and learning, uh, provides a variety of learning experience that may never be encountered during school, prepares nurses for clinical practice, the experiences enhance nursing students' self-efficacy of communication skills, and overall increases confidence in clinical settings. However, despite all those positives, many reported benefits that we just discussed, there's been reports related to inadequate amounts of quantifiable data on the effects of high fidelity simulation. So there's a lack of direct correlation between high fidelity learning experiences and the intended learning outcome. Also, there's minimal to no differences in outcomes between high fidelity simulation experiences and low fidelity experiences. As well, studies have found no significant difference in a nursing student confidence between students who participated in high fidelity and students who did not participate. Minimal studies conducted have shown direct improvements in patient outcomes from the use of simulation, and also there's inadequate data on the transfer of knowledge to the clinical setting. All right, moving on to the methodology. Uh, the survey tool was formatted electronically using Google Docs. Uh, the electronic survey link was emailed to the identified research subjects. And moving forward to project design. The quantitative correlational research design study design was used to determine if a relationship exists between the identified variables. So as I previously talked about, the independent variable for the study was high fidelity simulation, and the dependent variable was enhanced self-efficacy. The variables were identified or that were identified were measured without any manipulation. Sample size was determined using G power analysis, and through that analysis it was discovered that it required 46 subjects to determine significant correlation. Another important point, the results of the study are not generalizable based on the use of a convenient sample, and in addition, correlation between the variables does not necessarily reflect, reflect a cause and effect relationship. Some of the following um, were looked at in terms of internal validity threats. So maturation, statistical regression, and attrition were not a concern for the study because it was a short-term single contact study. Testing and instrumentation were being done via the internet with a psychometrically established measure. And history and selection of subjects were minimized by a larger sample. The instrument itself. So the survey instrument known as the General Self-Efficacy Scale that was developed by Schwartz and Drusen was used to collect data. The scale consists of 10 questions with the scoring responses comprised of a four-point scale. The format, as noted, not at all true, up to exactly true. The sum of the 10 items yielded a possible composite score with a range between 10 and 40. So prior to using the instruments and collecting data, I got permission from the authors to use the, um, the instrument. I chose to use the general self-efficacy scale as a data collection tool because it has been widely used for the last two decades and was suitable for a wide range of applications, including clinical practice. Just some more technical information, but the instrument is one-dimensional, has a Cronbach's alpha coefficients ranging between 0.76 to 0.9, with the majority in the high 80s. So the coefficient is an important measure of the internal consistency, which describes the extent 
to which all the test items included measures included, pardon me, measures the same concept. The Cronbach alpha coefficients are considered acceptable in research if they're above 0.7, which is the case for the general self-efficacy scale. That means it demonstrated good internal reliability. Validity is concerned with the extent to which an instrument measures what it's intending to measure. So the validity of the survey tool has been documented in many correlational studies where both positive and negative coefficients were observed. Content validity was established universally across 25 countries in a study done by Schultz, 2002. So in addition to collecting information on self-efficacy, I did other, other questions on, you know, collecting democratic, demographic data, including age, gender, number of experiences, quarter term, et cetera. So my instrument, I uh, did perform a Cronbach's Alpha host survey. The coefficient was 0.914 which is very strong and exceeds the research criterion as we just discussed at point of 0.70. So the results from this study found confirmatory results for high internal consistency. So on to the data collection. So online survey was used for Google Docs as noted before. An email survey link was sent to potential subjects. A reminder email was sent one week later with the survey link closing at the end of week two. In relation to um, data management, um, so the survey responses were transferred from the Google Docs database to a digitally stored password protected database on my personal laptop computer. Um, data will be kept for five years, um, and after the five years, all data will be destroyed accordingly. Moving on to the data analysis. So I used the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient to analyze the collected data. So to test the hypothesis, the Spearman's rank correlation provided me with the determination of the strength and direction of the relation between the two main variables being studied. Remember, they were simulation experiences and self-efficacy. All data for the research study was analyzed using the SPSS version 20.0. So on to ethical considerations. So I obtained IRB approval from American Sentinel University. My data collected, collection sites, education affiliates is a partner of American Central University and did not have a separate IRB. Informed consent was obtained, and there was no benefits or risks associated with participating in this study. Uh, the, uh, pardon me, the submitted survey represented um, 11.7 response rate from the target population of 402 students um, in the edu education affiliates network incorporated schools. Um, survey response rate is consistent with studies that report online surveys that yield typically a 6 to 15 percent response rate on average. So the next couple of slides are really results, demographics. As I mentioned earlier, it, I asked about age, gender, um, number of high fidelity experiences that they participated in, that they had previous patient care experiences, previous educational preparation, and I wanted to know what term or quarter the students were enrolled in. So the results. In the research study, 0% um, respondents score between 10 and 26 points. So thinking back earlier, the score had a, the scale had a possible score between 10 and 40 points. The higher the point score, the more self-efficacy. So 40.4%, which is 19 respondents, scored between 27 and 30 points. 59.6, which is 28 respondents, scored between 31 and 40 points. So 100% of subjects score between 27 and 40 points, and the mean GSA, or general self-efficacy score, was around 33. So moving on to the results discussion. So as a result of my data analysis, the null hypothesis was rejected. If we recall, my null hypothesis was high-fidelity simulation experiences will not increase practical nursing student self-efficacy in relation to preparing to work in the clinical setting. So to test my hypothesis, as I noted before, the Spearman's rank correlation provided me with the determination of the strength and direction of the relation between the two main variables being studied. So as a result of my data analysis, a positive correlation was determined. The positive correlation basically indicates that when one variable increases, the other variable also increases. In my study, the correlation value was 1.00, which indicates a positive correlation. In addition, the R value of the correlation coefficient, which measured the strength and direction, was 0 0.444, which indicates that the correlation is moderate. The statistical significance determined uh, was determined by the p-value, and in my study, the p 
was 0 0.02, which is less than the 0 0.5 significance level. So a statistically significant and positive correlation was found between the high fidelity simulation experiences and the practical nursing student's health efficacy in relation to preparing to work in the clinical setting. So moving along to significance to the nursing profession. So given that there was statistically significant and positive correlation found between high fidelity simulation experiences and the practical nursing student's self-efficacy, there's some implications as high fidelity simulation experiences may be able to help to address the following concerns in the nursing field. So looking at nursing leaders in the world of practice, as we know, they're facing daily challenges with nurse staff, staff turnover, ongoing recruitment challenges, and unstable workforce. Nursing practice leaders must be acutely interested in how nursing schools can better prepare students to take on the role of graduate nurse and feel better equipped with the knowledge and skills to function in these multifaceted healthcare environments. So the research study has shown that there's a correlation between the high fidelity simulation and the practical nurse's student self-efficacy. Highly efficient people have the confidence and perseverance required for success. Thinking back to what Bandura talked about and believed, he said that self-efficacy is a better predictor of success than an array of other concepts, including knowledge and skills and self-concept, to name a few. So as a teaching and learning technology, high-fidelity simulation can provide the learner with this increased sense of self-efficacy, thereby promoting the student's successful transition in the clinical setting. The other group of people um, where there's implications for, of course, are the nursing education leaders. So nursing education leaders are charged with developing nursing curricula that best prepares new nurses to take on the role of a graduate nurse. High fidelity simulation experiences can provide those learning opportunities to help build a student's knowledge, critical thinking, and clinical reasoning skills. So the simulation experiences can provide a learning environment whereby students can actually make mistakes without adverse effects to patients. Through these learning opportunities, students can then gain confidence in their abilities, which can enhance their perceived self-efficacy and allow them to be more successful in clinical experiences, thus contributing to a healthy nursing workforce. In addition to having implications for um, you know, practice leaders and education leaders, the study can also provide policymakers with some quantitative data related to high fidelity simulation and perceived self-efficacy. So we know over the last number of years, the boards of nursing are still debating and are debating or have debated and are still debating whether or not high fidelity simulation could be used as a replacement to required clinical hours. As we know, there's no consensus across the United States on what percentage should be used, but studies like this that provides um, data can help to inform new policy decisions. And typically, the healthcare system, of course, lastly, the patients and families who make up the healthcare system have a vested interest in the healthcare system, both locally and nationally. Healthcare system requires competent nurses to sustain the system and maintain a level of services and care that patients and their families are accustomed, accustomed to benefiting from. Um, so that, in turn, could definitely promote the student's um, knowledge base as they transition to the clinical setting and hopefully improve patient care. Some recommendations for future work. Well, nursing programs must infuse educational experiences such as high fidelity simulation and continue to build upon them where our students can gain the knowledge and skills that promote self-efficacy. Future research recommendations are to replicate my study with more participants, maybe from a variety of practical nursing schools across the United States, that would ultimately produce more of a representative sample. As well, it would be interesting to examine if high fidelity simulation experiences are causal in enhanced self-efficacy of practical nursing students. So the study that proves the causal relationships holds much more significance and provides additional solid quantifiable data to support the use of high fidelity simulation as that teaching and learning strategy in nursing curricula. Another future research recommendation will be related to does high fidelity, or pardon me, does high self-efficacy lead to successful transition in the clinical practice setting? So with all the reported expectations and demands from new graduate nurses to transition seamlessly, this would provide excellent information that can provide a research link for the existing studies in high fidelity simulation and self-efficacy. So generally, like overall, there's a lack of quantifiable data related to whether or not high fidelity simulation has any impact on patient outcomes in the clinical setting. So definitely future research related to the impact on patient outcomes would contribute to the knowledge base of high fidelity simulation and will allow a more comprehensive view of this technology. All right, and in summary, 
Um, I conducted a quantitative correlational study, examined whether or not practical nursing students engaging in this high fidelity simulation purported enhanced self-efficacy in relation to preparing to work in the clinical setting. The results found through my study was a statistically significant and positive correlation between the variables. Additional findings found that as high fidelity simulation experiences increase, so do the practical nursing student self-efficacy. So I'm recommending implementing high fidelity simulation in practical nursing curricula to support student learning with the overall goal of helping to ease the transition into the clinical setting. And that concludes my capstone project defense. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you so much for joining me.